Griffins, uh, Miss Bell, Miss McDonald here, just to give you a bit of an update on what our new topic is. So our new topic that we're going to be doing this half term is called Frozen Kingdoms. It's all about those cold regions on the planet, so talk about the Arctic in the north and the Antarctic in the south, and we're going to have um, a bit of geography based learning all about those two different regions and making some comparisons between the Arctic, Antarctic and also with the UK. We're going to be thinking about looking on a map where we might be able to find them and we'll also be looking at some of the people and animals that we will find uh, as well as some of the physical geography features that you will find in those two locations. Um, during this autumn half term we will be creating an art piece all on the Northern Lights so uh, to prepare for that lesson, why don't you research some facts at home, maybe what their real name is, where you might find them, maybe what creates the colours, and then bring in those facts to the lesson so we can have a discussion about what you already know and what else we can learn from, about it. It would also be really useful if you went onto Netflix and had a look at some documentaries also with the polar regions. Okay. Um, Enjoy. Uh, I really hope you go off and do some learning on your own as it will really help with our lessons in school. Thank Look you. Look forward to the lesson. Thank you. Bye. Autumn 2 in maths. Uh, we're going to continue our journey with operations. Moving on to division. We have two different methods for division. We use one specifically when we're dividing by a one digit number. Um, it, as I say, it's the old bus stop method that we used when I was at school, um, where we carry numbers over and we're repeatedly taking that times table away until we've used all the numbers. And in year six, we do go into decimal numbers as well. Um, when we're doing dividing by a two digit number, it's what we call long division. So we're taking chunks of the times tables away. So for instance, we'd be able to take 60 away for five times 12 we'd be left with a 10, the three comes down, and then from the 103, again, we've got to take a chunk of the, the 12 times table, so we go 96, which is eight times, and we're left with seven. Again, the two comes down, and we can take six times 12, which is 72, which gets us down to zero. There are occasions when we, we do go into uh, remainders, so it won't end down to zero, and we'd record our answer as a fraction in year six. Once we've completed division, we then move on to fractions. It's Again, it's a long period of time across the autumn term because we have to use all four operations with fractions. Uh, when we're adding fractions, we make sure the denominator are the same, and then it's just adding the top number and the denominator remains. Subtraction is exactly the same as addition same denominator and then we'll be able to take the number on the right away from the number on the left. Multiplication, uh, the year six is fine relatively easy compared to the addition and subtraction because there's no change in the denominators. It's just a case of top times top, bottom times bottom and we have a new fraction and then sometimes we can simplify it. On this occasion we can't because 21 is that prime number. With division, we, we do a kind of a, a clever little trick with our second number that we, we make it a fraction over one and then we flip it and multiply because multiplying is easier than our division. And again, we'd simplify it if we could, but obviously seven is a prime number, so we can't simplify that. Um, hi, I'm just going to talk to you a little bit about English in autumn two. Um, so we are just completing our balance discussions that we started in autumn one. So we're nearly finished with that. And then we will be moving on to a new text called Otto. And it is a lovely book um, that we'll be looking at. It's still linked with World War Two, although the topic in the afternoon has moved on. Um, and we will be looking at using inverted commas throughout this. Um, so we will give the children some different images um, in the book. We won't actually tell them initially what the story is and the idea is they have to gather the information from the picture and infer what they think is happening. Um, so I've just um, noted down a couple of rules for inverted commas that I think would be good for you to practice with your children at home to get them ready and prepared for our lesson. Um, so inverted commas used to be called speech marks when we were at school, um, definitely 6699 they might refer to them as, um, but it's just those inverted commas that go around the words that are being spoken. Um, so some of the rules are that you need a capital letter at the start of the spoken words, that's even if you're reporting clauses at the beginning, whenever somebody starts speaking you need to have the capital letter there. 
Um, inverted commas will surround what's being said. So for example, with my example here, come here, yeah, Becky, the inverted commas will go around what is actually being said and not the reporting clause too. Um, you will need a reporting clause to explain who has said it. So for example, shouted Ellie. You will need your punctuation to go inside the inverted commas. So I know this seems to be a common mistake where people put it on the outside. It does need to come on the inside and children need to practice doing that um, to make sure it's punctuated correctly. And also new speaker, new line. So if somebody else responds in a conversation, you would go to <coughs> the line underneath um, every time somebody starts speaking. So a good thing to practice might be even looking at things like text messages. Can you have a go at um, looking at a text message and writing it down as direct speech? Um, so that would be a good idea to practice before our lessons. Thank you.